Hey, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm Josh. And, you know, what better place to be than the beach right now? Because AI has basically taken over my job. I'm just kidding. Although AI isn't going to replace your job right now, it is going to help you be more productive. And so let's go inside and talk about it. Okay, so before we start installing plugins and talking strategies, I'm going to give you a brief history lesson on the state of AI right now. In November of 2022, a company called OpenAI released ChatGPT to the world and they hit a million users in five days. And then less than a year later, Meta released Llama 2, which proved to be a very capable open source model. So clearly we're in a boom, lots of competition, lots of interesting companies showing up in the world and making space for language models. In particular, we're gonna talk about large language models like Copilot from GitHub and Llama from Meta. So just keep in mind that these options are gonna be different by the time I publish this video. So I know you really wanna talk about NeoVim and AI and we'll get to the plugins, we'll get to all of that stuff. So let me go show you around. Okay, so now it's time to talk about AI in NeoVim. Over the past year or two, I have pivoted between different plugins, experimented with different models, and so I'll talk about what's working well for me today and what might work best for you. But first, I wanna give a shout out to David Kunz, who created a plugin called gen.invim. His plugin showed me the capabilities of what's possible with language models right now in NeoVim, and it got me excited, and I really started to dig into it once David was able to release that plugin. Okay, here we are. Uh, today, I'm gonna to talk about three topics. The first is code completion. The next is chat. And then the third is just general generation. And I'll talk about that when we get there. For code completion, I use GitHub's Copilot Vim extension. It's written by the Tim Pope, who we love. And it's fairly simple. Um, what it does is it creates virtual text. And so you can basically start typing and it's going to give me suggestions on what I might want to say or do. And so I just use the tab key to complete that. Um, however, uh, a useful tip is that when you create code comments above your code, uh, you can help sort of coerce or guide the code completion tool as to what you want. As you can see, there are plenty of alternatives. Many people prefer to put Copilot results in their comp, which is that sort of drop down autocomplete. And there are other solutions like Tab9 and Codium who offer specific models and code completion libraries to go with it. And so that can be a good alternative if you don't want to pay for Copilot or you'd rather use a different set of data. Um, and then finally, Minuet is an interesting option. They are a bit smaller in popularity, but they have this interesting concept of mixing different language models together. Uh, and so I think that it's worth calling out um, that. Again, Copilot Comp puts it in autocomplete. Codium uh, follows a similar pattern where they're doing the same thing, but they're using their model. And again, most of these tools prefer the drop down type tooling, but really it's just a simple way of be being provided results as you type. And that's kind of where we get the term completion from. Um, but this Minuet uh, is a good one because they are offering a mix of different completion options using different models, which I think at this point in AI, it's best to have variety and options because these models do differ. And I think some perform better than others. I personally have stuck to the Copilot completion engine built by the GitHub team, by Tim Pope, because it seems to be stable enough and helpful enough that it gets everything that I need done. Okay, next I wanna talk about chat. Chat is a useful way of communicating with your code by having a conversation. Um, I think this was made most popular by ChatGPT and there are many options, but I personally am using the plugin that the Lazy Vim uh, starting template. It's one of their extras and it's called copilotchat.invim. And so copilotchat.invim is just bound to space AA 
and it shows up on the side and I can say like explain this code, right? And so again, it just gives me conversations and it allows me to understand what's going on um, and what is making sense of it, right? It says, okay, these lines are doing this and these other lines are doing that. If I was to go somewhere else in the code, I may want to select something and then ask a specific question, like how would I make this valid React? And it can suggest that I change the casing of this to clip rule. And if I want to accept that, I can just hit control Y and it will automatically um, insert that into the buffer. And so it's a great way to select something, ask a question, ask it to fix it, that kind of thing. And it's really easy to interact with it that way. Um, I find that it's also incredibly useful for things like syntax problems. So when we have a parsing error like this, it's not always clear where we might find the problem. And so I like to use space AD, and this pulls up a diagnostic specific helper functionality from Copilot. And if I say that I want to fix this, it will actually scan it. It will dump the error into my chat help. You will see up here, let me show you how this works. Uh, so up here, uh, we can see that it dumps in the issue and then gives a solution. And so again, we can hit control Y and just like that, it fixes my syntax problem. Um, so pretty cool, pretty helpful. You'll notice that it's not always perfect. Uh, we'll see even here that there's something going on. And so just keep that in mind as you work with this. And sure enough, Copilot actually also fixed my other prop and they also passed in this, they spreaded this onto the SVG. So there are multiple things I know I needed to do in order to fix this. And in some cases, when you ask it to do one thing, it will sometimes do other things. So that can be really useful, but in other cases, it can be really frustrating. So you need to practice and balance when it's most useful and when, you know, just doing the work is worth it and maybe not asking language models in order to do something. There is this term called hallucination as well, which I'd like to mention. And that is this idea that language models think they're correct most of the time, even when they're not. And it takes a sharpened experienced developer to know the difference. And so I always recommend that beginners are very cautious to try and introduce these to their workflows. However, more experienced developers will find that it's incredibly useful to have tooling like this where it can guide us to the answer because we often would have to go to documentation or we might have to head to Stack Overflow and try to find conversations around bug fixes or specific problems that show up in our workflow. And so language models are for me and specifically chat, it's a way of breaking apart that distinction where I don't need to really go to the website and go find an answer somewhere. I can start by just having these language models present potential solutions and then work through them in order to get the right result. And so I have found that Copilot Chat specifically is the best for me. Um, I find it to be the most simple. And again, I use Copilot for most of my things. Um, and so it's just kind of just the sweet spot for getting what I need done. Um, I will say that Avante is an incredibly, incredibly popular option now. Um, and so you've probably heard of this one. You may want my feedback on this. Maybe that's why he showed up today. Um, and I think Avante is great. I think that they have great potential. Um, they are good at context. They're good at many things. Um, what I will say about it so far is that I find it to be a little bit more clunky than the Copilot tooling. I find the Copilot chat has enough context that it is useful and provides the solutions that I need. However, I do want to spend more time with Avante as it's very popular and Claude, I think, is very capable as a model. And so it'll be interesting to see where all of this goes. And so Anthropic works a bit differently. Uh, it claims to do more and to have more context and to be more capable than some of the other toolings. However, I have found that it takes more keystrokes than I would have hoped for, for it to fully fit into my workflow. 
um, and some of the color highlighting and stuff like that, I got it got in my way and I had trouble getting it set up correctly. And so it could be user error. It could be that I just haven't learned how to leverage it. And that's the interesting thing about all of these AI plugins in NeoVim is that some people are doing things a different way. And so the UX does differ from plugin to plugin. I think Avante has great potential and I think it's definitely worth checking out. But for me today, um, the co-pilot chat tool is more than enough for me. And then the final topic to talk about is generation in general. And so this for me tends to be rewriting code or modifying code or overwriting something or refactoring something. Uh, this is sort of a general thing. And so gen.invim I mentioned earlier got me into this idea. Um, there's also an alternative called model.invim that I think is pretty cool. Uh, but for me, I use one that I think is underrated and it's called GP Invim. And what GP Invim is all about is creating conversation sessions, doing operations, and has a clever voice to speech feature, which unfortunately isn't working on my machine right now, but I've played with it in the past and it's kind of a fun way to interact with these elements. And so the most basic of this is now, uh, I have everything bound to control G and so control G lets me say that I want to append, start a new chat, I want to do a rewrite. And so the most common thing that I would do is I would, uh, let's go here, I would say like, I want to simplify the table. Um, and just like in line, it's able to do things and change the output. Um, that's probably a contrived example. But for me, the ability to select code and to generate something new off of it using language, uh, simple language is really helpful. And so I may say that I want to alphabetize these, right? And that's not something that would be easy to do, uh, at least not simple. And so if I wanted to rewrite this and I say alpha, the list of authors, uh, no, they're not list of authors. We'll see that just like that, it's able to sort them. Anthropic, Copilot, Olama, AI, right? And so that's kind of nice that you can do things like that. I also find that there can be opportunities where you want to repeat something, something you might do with a macro, you could do more naturally with uh, code generation using a language model. So I may want to say, remove all code comments. And just like that, it takes a little bit of a moment. It depends on what model you're using. Uh, but it's able to make sense of what you asked for and run this out. The other thing that I really like to do is I like to change models with this tool. And so you'll see that if I hit command control G next, uh, in for next, I can swap between different models, code uh, GPTO, code Olama. Um, and the way that I've set these up, even there's a new one called Quen uh, that just got released recently. And so I'm able to switch between them using a tool called agents, uh, which is a really popular concept in language models. Basically think of it as separate operations using specific prompting, specific modeling. Um, and this one can be handled via chat or commands. Um, and so it's a really useful way of getting around and doing things. Um, a more advanced concept that I want to show you is this idea of prompting. Uh, and so we have one here. I can create a custom command. And so this one is called React SVG, uh, React Icon SVG. Um, and it's a bit more specific where I say, I'm going to give you SVG code and I'm going to give you input and I need you to re remove some props. I need you to put the props uh, spread on the SVG elements. I need you to replace all the fill values with current color. And so this is my way of refactoring uh, you know, a plain SVG HTML element into something that is valid for React, um, similar to what we were doing here. And so rather than just hoping for the best and kind of crossing your fingers and hoping that it will know what to do, we could say that we want to uh, React SVG icon, right? And so we're gonna replace some rules, we're gonna add the props. Um, and just like this, it takes a little bit of time depending on the model but what should spit out is 
code that follows all of the specific constraints that I set. Um, and that's an important concept to understand is that using natural language, the best way I can describe prompting and how to speak to the language models is by using your ability to set constraints on what you want to say. So please do this, always do that, never do this, right? Our ability to just naturally tell it what we do and don't want in a concise way is often the best way to get these language models to do what we want. And it doesn't even always work sometimes. And so I'm gonna actually go out of my way to pick a different model. I feel like GPT-4.0 is probably a good choice here. And so we can try again. Um, and you'll see that this is kind of a React SVG icon. And so here we can see it removed the rules, it added new props, and it does have to repeat code like the drawing uh, method on the path is long. And so these models have to use up a bit of tokens in order to ensure that they are the same as before. Um, and even sometimes you'll see that it provides more things than you might want. Uh, you are up to date. I don't know what that's about, but that specific model was being funny. However, here we can see the fill prop, uh, not the prop, the, these props, the fill rule, the clip rule, the fill current color all got fixed um, exactly the way I needed it to. Uh, and so I could have done this. Could I have done this faster? Possibly but uh, kind of takes the mental load off to do this once, uh, write the prompt and then tell the system, this is what I need to do. And so we'll see that this isn't super polished. Um, I have had moments where it lands perfectly and it does exactly what I wanted it to do. And that's really satisfying, but I have found in general over time that not, it's not how every day works for me. And being a programmer for a decade now, uh, my ability to make sense of what it's saying is really, really useful. Um, and there's so much more to explore, uh, things that I haven't even talked about today, but I think that this is a really ex exciting and um, interesting place to be uh, in the AI space right now. I hope that you go check out my blog post that goes with this. I'll post this, these code snippets and I'll share more thoughts. All right, so that is AI in NeoVim. I gave you lots of plugins, some discussion around what's working for me and what's not. Um, so I hope you go download some plugins, play around with some language models, and let me know what you think. A big shout out to Adam and his team for all of their hard work at NeoVimConf, and I will see you guys next time.